G'day and welcome to the Tech Maths channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is we're going to be looking at how to add and subtract thirds. So this looks this this takes into account a few of the uh, ideas that we've looked at in previous videos looking at thirds. And first off, I'll go through a couple of these. First off, what a third actually was. Now a third is a number which is exactly expressed as say something under a square root sign. Okay, so the square root of two. Now, if you were to type this into a calculator, you get this number with a big, long string of decimal places after it that are never occurring. So the most accurate way of, say, expressing this answer, or this number, is as the square root of 2. Um, the other things we looked at in this other videos was how to multiply thirds, where we, we found this particular law um, or rule, which was the square root of A times the square root of B is equal to the square root of A times B. Now, an example of this is, say, the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is equal to the square root of 2 times 3, which is the square root of 6. Another really, really important property to understand is that, that we had a look at was thirds can be simplified by expressing the number under the root sign um, as a product of factors. So one of these factors you're looking for is a perfect square. So if one of the factors of the numbers under here is a perfect square, it means that you can simplify it a little bit further. So say you had the square root of uh, 12, well you can actually, one of the factors being a 4, you can actually simplify that a little bit further, okay? If you can't, you can't actually simplify it further. So we're going to be having a look at this today, um, or in this video. So. Let's have a look at a couple of examples to start us off with this. Uh, perfect squares, by the way, we might be looking at say something like 2 squared, which is 4, or 3 squared, which is 9, or 4 squared, which is 16, 5 squared, 25, and so on and so forth. So, I might even keep those up for when we're working through these, because it's a really great idea to get. It's one of the big ideas to get is how you can actually simplify them further. And we did look at that, but I think it's it's something which eludes people a little bit. So, um, without much further talking, I'm just going to launch into how to add and subtract thirds. Now, say you get, say, something like uh, 4 times the square root of 2, and we want to add this to 5 times the square root of 2. Now, we can do this, and the reason for this is as follows. This is equal here to 4 times the square root of 2, and this one over here is equal to 5 times the square root of 2. Okay, so all together, we have square root of 2, we actually have all together this many plus this many. So we actually all together have 9 times the square root of 2. We just write this 9 square root of 2, so this is the answer to this. So you can directly add thirds together like this, as long as you have these like terms in the, as the thirds. Okay, if this is square root 3, you couldn't add these guys, but as long as these are, are like terms, you can add them. Okay, now um, let's take this a little bit further. So, say for example, we wish to do something like the following. We wish to say, um, do something like 3 times the square root of 3, and I want to add this to 2 times the square root of 6, as add this to the square root of 3. Now look, if you could say something like this to answer, what you might notice straight away is that we have a like term here to here. Okay, So we can add these guys together. We get this answer of 3 square root 3 plus square root 3 is 4 square root 3. This number here, it can't be simplified any further because it has no uh, factors that are perfect squares. Actually, none of these do. So it can't be simplified any further, and it is an unlocked term, so we just have to actually write this as 2 square root 6. And that's how we know when we finish these questions. We should be able to look at each of the actual numbers under the square root sign and go, well, they've got no factors that are actually perfect squares here. Okay, so it's a really important thing to get. So this here is our answer. Okay, so what about we add something a little bit harder now. So say I get you to add, um, or we'll add it together, the square root of 8 plus the square root of 18. Now, this can be simplified a bit further because if we have a look at the square root of 8, 
the factors of a, we have a couple that are actually perfect squares. We actually have one that's a perfect square, which is 4. Okay, So this one here is equal to the square root of 4 times 2, Okay, which is we can break up further because this this law of when we multiply them into the square root of 4 and the square root of 2. Okay, We're adding this to the square root of 19. So this here can also be broken up into the square root. And if you have a look here, because we have 9, 9 times 2, which can again be broken up into the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Okay, and these are being added together. Okay, so we can go through and answer a couple of these because the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. And this is being multiplied by the square root of 2, so I can just write the square root of 2 next to it, and this is being multiplied by the square root of 2. We're adding these guys together. So what we end up with is 3 square root 2 plus 2 square root 2, sorry, and 3 plus 3 square root 2 is 5 square root 2. Again, this has no factors, obviously, that are, well, there's no factors apart from 2 and 1, so we can't take this any further. This is our answer. So hopefully uh, you're understanding that a bit. Hopefully this is really uh, beginning to get how you can actually even see an answer when you've got one of these, okay? Because it is a, a real art form, I think, doing certs. I, th I got very confused, I remember, at school doing these. Uh, because I didn't ever quite understand that. So I'm going to go through one last example. What I mean, I do the square root of 54 plus the square root of 45 plus the square root of 125. Now, with these, look for factors that are perfect squares in these. So we see if we can simplify them. Does 4 go into them? Does 9? And you're looking for possibly the biggest ones, if you can. So 9 goes into 54. It goes in. 9 goes in the square root of 9. And we have the square root of 6. Okay, because 6 9s are 54. Over here, we the ones we're going to be adding, okay, I'm going to put the plus as a different sign so we can really separate things up here. So, over here we have 45. Now, 45, the numbers that go into it here, 9 5s are 45. So, we have the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. We're adding this to, finally, we have a look here, the numbers are going here. The largest one I can think of here is 25, because 20, we have the square root of 25, and 25 times 5, so the square root of 5 is 125. Okay, you good with that? So we can answer a couple of these. The square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 9 here is 3, and the square root of 25 is 5. And then we just write these square roots next to it. So square root of 6, the square root of 5, the square root of 5, because that's why we're multiplying each one by. We put the same signs between. So, do we have any like terms here? We do. So we can add these guys together. We end up with 3, so that we equals 3 times the square root of 5 plus 5 the square root of 5. So I'll put this one down here first, actually, because it's, it's a, might as well it's in that order. This is going to be 3 times the square root of 6. He's all by himself. He can't be uh, factorise anymore. None of these numbers here go into it. None of these perfect square numbers go into it. So he can't go any any further down. And these guys here, their, their factors can't go any further down because neither can they be. They don't have any factors that are perfect squares in them. So we just have to add these guys together. So 3 plus 5 is 8 square root 5. And that's our answer. So hopefully that really helped you um, adding the uh, adding square root numbers um, and subtracting, look I know I didn't actually do any examples there, but subtracting is a similar sort of thing, just where you would actually be taking numbers away obviously. Uh, but really, really important I think that A, you understand how to multiply thirds, but also, um, and that, that, that's in, in order to add them, but also that this idea of how you can factorise them using this idea of perfect square numbers, perfect square factors. Okay, I hope that was a big help. Um, good luck in doing thirds in math class. See you next time.